That's brilliant. Right, now I'd like to uh, um, introduce uh, Vince Knight from uh, the mathematics department. Um, Vince is, uh, I think, quite the, the exceptional that he, uh, he came out of the Google program, really enthused about these sorts of things. Um, it's great to listen to his talks. Um, so, Vince's done a lot of um, work with uh, working with groups and things in uh, the mathematics teaching. So, uh, I'm going to talk to us about some of that today. Thanks a lot, Steve. It's, uh, it's been really great. I've learned, I've learned so much uh, uh, today, and thanks for having me. And yeah, just to briefly mention, uh, I forgot to hold on. Uh, Claire and Kat, it was, I went in dragging my feet because I had to, and I, I, I came out trying to tell everyone this is the best thing uh, ever. It really changed my career, so I'm, I'm, I'm very grateful for the support they, they gave. Uh, so I'm going to be talking about basically a story. Um, I'm not I'm not sure if it's going to be uh, in light of everyone's expectations, but a story of something we did at the School of Mathematics to solve a particular problem. Um, my slides are already there if you want to follow along. Um, and uh, well, here here we go. So this this is a direct quote from a student. Uh, well, not quite direct, that's quite maybe a bit more family friendly. Um, a direct quote from a student in the middle of the process that I'm going to talk to you about. Um, so at, at, at the end, um, they, they were smiling, but it, it was something that, that I, I enjoyed. So, um, um, so Stephen, I apologize, I'm going to uh, preempt something you might say in a little bit. But you gave a talk at the School of Mathematics a month ago, how long ago it was, I don't know, uh, where you, you mentioned the fact that with, with large class sizes, um, students can be thought of as a, as a problem, right? There's just too many of them. How are we going to deal with them? Um, but a better way to think of them is in terms of a, a resource. And, and having a lot of students can be a useful thing. And indeed, that's where collaborative uh, learning comes, comes in. So I, when you said that, I thought about this a little bit. And, and ideally, you know, the ratio of available time to how many students we have would be on this red line, right? Where we'd have just the right amount of time for just the right amount of students. So, so down here, we'd have one student, right? With, with exactly how much time they need, and we'd just sit with them for a couple of hours a week, a day, whatever, and we'd just talk um, and learn uh, together. Uh, down here is where we have far too much time uh, and, and, you know, we're, we're just twiddling our thumbs at, at home. And that, that's very much utopic. But in reality, we're up here, where, where our student numbers are, are large. Um, uh, not quite as large as some universities that I, I found out recently, but uh, they, are, they are large. And we have more students than we have time for. In other words, that we can't have a one-on-one -on -one with our students all, all the time. I think Ideally, from an assessment point of view, again, in the utopic world, so somewhere down here, how would we assess students? We'd take them out for a coffee, perhaps, and sit with them and talk with them uh, individually instead of sitting in front of the exam, uh, ideally. Uh, <coughs> examinations, like lectures, are, are, are things that, that allow us to, to scale very easily. So uh, we're not there, sadly. We don't have that idyllic, idyllic situation. But uh, what Steve talked about, and what Klaus will talk about later, and I think a lot of people have talked about, and I think that collaborative learning, um, as well as all these benefits that we've obviously talked about, but from just a very pragmatic point of view, allows us to deal with this situation. We have too many students. If we put them in groups, and consider those groups of students as entities, well, from a purely mathematical point of view on this graph, we kind of come down closer towards the red line. We've obviously we've discussed today all the benefits of collaborative learning, so I'm not saying that that is one of them. Um, and there's lots of great stuff that's been done here, but if we have, um, we have time and we just have too many students, what I'm going to talk about is something where down here, where the amount of time, the amount, sorry, the number of students we have is respectable. On our, is, I'm going to talk about something on our MSc course, and the amount of students we have is not too high. We have some between 20 and 30 MSc students on one of our MSc's. But for the purposes of what they need to learn, we just don't have that much time. Um, and, and so we're in the same kind of ratio, but it's really the time that we don't have. And I'll, I'll, I'll expand about that now. <clears throat> Object-oriented programming is a particular area of uh, 
computer science of programming is a particular paradigm. And it's something that our mathematics students were not learning. Um, we were teaching them how to code, but I'm getting slightly technical, so forgive me, but we were teaching them how to write very basic code. And object-oriented programming is what's needed in the real world, so to speak. And so our, our scientific advisory, sorry, our industrial advisory board came back and said, listen, it's great, your, your students know this, that, and this, but it would be great if they were aware of, of object-oriented programming, so, so as to, when they started learning it, <coughs> when they started, pardon me, seeing it in industry, it's not a shock. They just know what it is. So when I when I devised what I'm about to tell you about, I drew this picture, and I was very impressed. Um, I showed my at the time girlfriend, "Are you impressed with this picture?" And uh, <coughs> and she was not. I thought I thought that as a bioscientist she would be because I thought I'd drawn cells with DNA and stuff. Um, but I thought I'll put this slide up in the School of Biosciences um, and hopefully disappoint you. So, <coughs> the best way to think about object-oriented programming is in terms of a puzzle. It allows you to write code. And fit together nicely. And um, <coughs> I might not be able to finish this. <laughs> so, and that's what's used in the real world because not everyone writes everything. People write bits of stuff that works together. Uh, so, from the point of view of a puzzle, pardon me, can you hear me? I, I don't know if you can actually. Okay. Uh, from the point of view of a puzzle, um, it might be I'm going to go write the user interface, you're going to go write the thing that solves an equation. You go write the thing that makes it look pretty and then it can all come together. So the reason I had to set it up stuff is that that's kind of how I believe cells work. Bits of the cells do particular things, right? <coughs> now, we have to find a way for students to gain an understanding of object-oriented programming in their second semester in what is an already very busy term. Um, and it's not something that fundamentally to get an, the, this MSc they need to know, so it's, which is why it's not there to begin with, but it's a particular class that's useful. So if you look there for the 11 weeks, they have this one week six where they're slightly less busy. Um, they, it's kind of transition weeks between the two halves of the, the semester, and they have, in fact, a lot of individual student presentations. And so we had a big meeting off the industrial, in the industrial uh, advisory board met and said, well, we just can't. We just can't teach that. There's no room for it. <coughs> but um, we, uh, we came to suggest, well, actually, if we can find two or three days where we can give enough understanding of the basic concepts, that'll be enough. That'll be enough. <coughs> and we found out that in week six, we have a little bit of space. Thursday and Friday, these students were, in fact, free. So what we uh, put together, myself and Professor Harper, the, the head of the MSc, was a hackathon. Has, everyone, has anyone not heard of a hackathon before? Okay, so a hackathon comes from uh, computer science, and, uh, <coughs> and it's basically you go away for two, week, uh, two days, pardon me, a day, two days, three days, and you um, uh, work on a project. And usually it's quite intense, it's a lot of fun, there's usually pizza, and it's sometimes it's a competition uh, where people are trying to solve a particular thing, um, and it's great. I, I go to them, and quite frankly, they're just so much fun because you just go, you know for those two days, some of the nights you're just going to be working on something. It's got to be intense, it's got to be, oh wow, they did that in two days. That's, that's the idea. So we, we put this in a hackathon format. On the Monday... It's done in a bit of a flipped class kind of environment, but on the Monday we have scheduled a, uh, didact a didactic learning exercise where we tell them the basics of object-oriented programming. We do it in about an hour, uh, which, given that sometimes it takes years, to learn is probably a bit short. But we say, here is the basics, um, and then here are some videos, some other resources, etc., etc., that kind of reemphasize it. And then we say, go away. On Thursday, when you turn up, you will have a challenge. You're in a group of four, pardon me, 
the group of four, you'll have a challenge, and then you'll start working on this challenge. At the end of Thursday, you'll have a feedback session with myself and the two PhD students who helped me run this. And then on Friday, you'll finish it. And the important thing is that the assessment is happening throughout. Sure, we take a look at what they give us at the end of Friday, but because we're working with these groups for more or less 48 hours plus or minus sleep, we already know what they're going to give us. Um, so it's kind of irrelevant. And so it's, it's almost going back to that red line I put up where the ideal way of assessing someone would just be to chat with them. Um, and because we're continuously just finding out where they are. Uh, I'll show you the, uh, <coughs> the challenges very briefly. Um, they, for example, here is, uh, here is one of them. This was one that we used this year. Um, they had to build some code that took care of the mathematics of when you should restock a hot dog stand and by how much. Might sound very simple. It's actually take the hardest part of running this is not the actual three days it takes. It's the couple of weeks it takes me to write the challenges so that they're sufficiently difficult, they make sense to be broken up, and that they can be done. Um, this one, in fact, had been simplified quite a few times. So I wrote the challenge, I was like, I don't know how to do that, and then I kept on breaking it down. Um, and here's, an, here's for that particular one, <laughs> one of the students actually, through discussions with us, when I kept on saying, no, no, you need to go understand the problem, drew that, and, and I thought that was quite amusing. <coughs> So on the Thursday, when, when we give the challenge, we tell the groups, go away. Go away. We're going to be around for, for two days, and we will see you at half four otherwise. And then um, different groups do different things. We hunt them down uh, to find out where they are. I'll show you a, uh, what we do to keep track of everything. And here you see the students. This particular group were great. The first thing they did was they stepped away from their keyboard. Um, when it comes to coding exercises, students often just jump on the keyboard straight away. Um, it's equivalent to when they're trying to work out mathematics, they feel they need a pen and they need to write down the solution first as opposed to just step away and think about them. So this group actually went for about three hours to a whiteboard in one of the rooms, which was great. We were so encouraged by it, but then at some point they needed to actually start working and they didn't quite do that. <clears throat> Here's another group. Uh, the quote I put up on my second slide was given to me by one of the people in this group. And uh, as you can see, they're more or less all smiling. And the person people it is as well. This is on the second day after things started getting better. And uh, right there, they're writing down some quite complicated object-oriented concepts. That's, that's, that's for you to see. But again, they've just gone off to a room in the library somewhere. I don't really care uh, where they were. Um, this is how I think students feel through this process. Um, not at all based on anything apart from just my, my opinion, so, so I, I don't know. So they, they start off with probably quite high morale. They just finished their student presentation. They don't really know what they're doing. Um, and then all of a sudden, well, not the students. Uh, that's what I mentioned at, at the start, uh, that in week six, they have other students on tape. Oh, so there's nothing to do with Nothing to do with this, no. no. Um, and so then all of a sudden it hits them that, that it's difficult. Um, and it is difficult. It's very difficult. It's a, it's a very difficult two weeks. One of the PhD students who's um, helping me with this, but did the MSc last year, says it was the hardest part of an MSc. Um, so, and that was the point at which I got that lovely quote. Um, I think the students probably do feel alone, because a lot of the students actually at this point don't work together. A lot of them are just typing on their keyboards, um, trying to Google everything. Um, and then, we come to the feedback sessions on, on the Thursday evening, uh, Thursday afternoon, Thursday evening. I think, I think this year we finished at about nine. And basically students come in for half an hour uh, with myself and the two PhD students. We've been observing them. We're kind of walking around observing them. And, uh, and we have a talk. And so um, the main thing we tell them is, guys, you need to work together. You're not going to have time now to, to do this uh, with the time you have left. So, what I suggest is you've done this, now break this up like this, and then work together. Step away from the keyboard, etc., etc. Cetera, et cetera. And then, and then on a Friday, we're actually quite helpful. Um, uh, because by this point, the big deal breaker for us is that we allow the students to understand what they don't understand. And then on Friday, they're like, I need to know, I have to find a way to count the hot dogs. Okay, well, this is what you need. 
And that allows the students to identify their difficulties. But obviously not all groups, some, some groups by this stage have finished the, 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 the thing and it's just a question of doing everything and look uh, so here we don't say much. We pretty much just observe. Um, when students ask questions, we ask a question back. Um, which, which is something. Uh, the assessment, although, as I said, it's kind of continuous. We're just getting an understanding of where they are with regard to learning outcomes and what we're trying to do. Um, this is one PhD student that helped out, but don't worry about him. What I want you to worry about is the board that's behind uh, him. I tweeted this picture just as we'd started, but we'd already written something, so I have to stand there, so kidding. Uh, that's the board that we kind of keep track of what all the students are doing. What you have there, every column is a group. The first thing you see across is which room they're in. So that's kind of <coughs> when we tell them to go away, we then help them down, we find out where they are, and we say, you know, go wherever you want, but just let us know where you are, because we kind of want to come around. And then myself, Jason, and Geraint, we basically walk around the groups, we come back to, oh, did you see what group two did? Yeah, yeah, okay, great. Oh, did you see what group three did? Yeah, yeah, great. And then the board starts looking like uh, this. You know, they're, for example, they're happy there. Um, this particular exercise could be done by building on some code that I've got on the internet. And so we kind of noted down the point at which they had have group K code is when we got it. Uh, here we're right now, X and object going to the stuff. And we're just little notes to ourselves of how, how they're doing. And then we're writing this down and, and continuing some reporting. And this is quite nice because. It's a really fun day for us to, for us three, sorry, as well, because we're kind of just on our feet, running around, looking at students learning and just observing the learning is really good fun. Um, the feedback we, we give for them is, is, is really fundamental on that Thursday night. Uh, this photo is just to show how exhausted we are. Uh, there's, there's, there's Jason Geraint who look pretty tired because it is exhausting. Um, it's absolutely exhausting. And uh, having to concentrate for the three or four hours it takes an individual, uh, that, that group feedback is pretty tight. But then at the very end, we do have like a bit of a award ceremony where we go through every group and we say, listen, this is what these groups are doing well. One group actually <coughs> changed something by realizing that the problem was equivalent to another problem, and then the code was actually very simple. When that actually happened, they, they came to see me and they're like, oh, Vince, what about this, this, this? And I was like, Okay, and I went there, I spoke to Jason and Gary, I was like, oh, is that true? Yeah, oh no, this is a lot easier than we thought, but thank you to everyone who saw it. Um, and then we give up, it's, it's usually just around the stage, so we give up. Um, this is how we feel. Uh, uh, we're, we, it's so much fun. Uh, then, then we hit the point where students are having difficulties, um, and then we're just so tired. Um, sometimes students cry. Um, but then the next day is where the learning really takes place. The first day is all about them identifying where they have difficulties and, and us encouraging them to communicate. Uh, and then by the end, we feel quite happy and proud because it's a really nice experience for the students, all three who know a little bit of uh, group. So, this is a quote I take out of this uh, article, and I showed more or less all my slides. Um, that basically, uh, it was a meta study of active learning and, and showed that active learning as opposed to didactic teaching, um, active learning would uh, it does improve performance of, of students. And, and I think uh, this, this collaborative learning, one of the reasons it's probably so performing is that it's, it's obviously situated in, within an active learning environment. Uh, you know, students have to be active because they have to talk to each other. Uh, so, uh, but, there's another quote from a gentleman called Robert Talbot who came and spoke at Cardiff last year. <clears throat> and um, he was, he, he's a big proponent of the flipped class. He loves the flipped class. He uses the flipped class all the time. But he, in conversations with people, he's so great because he kind of always comes around to just saying this. And he's like, listen, whatever you do, however you teach, it doesn't really matter. But unless you're teaching in a way that you get feedback in a timely manner about how your students are actually doing, then, then you're not really doing much. And by kindly, he means kindly so that you can react to it. Not necessarily react for next year. Oh, students had a hard time with that. Let's do this next year. I'll make sure they have this. But oh, we're doing this. You're not getting it. Okay, we're going to do that now. Um, or we'll go over this again. And that's some, it's one of my favorite. Uh, when he says, there's a couple of things that I've really liked hearing from people from you. Yeah? So your introductory community is very interesting to see. So you work with Uh, no, it's throughout. We're, we're kind of talking to students. So students, 
when it can be approved. On the first day, we don't say much. We're kind of gaining the feedback from them. And then on the second day, it's all about, okay, you're doing this, now you should try that. So this, I would say, watching them. Yeah, we're watching. Yeah, yeah. Sorry? Whilst we're not saying much, we're gaining the feedback, and then the, the timely manner is for that evening, uh, really, to the time. So, what is the difference between giving you one hour? So you're going around seeing the students doing stuff that you well, I'm still doing it, but you know, then you just explain to yourself. Yeah, this is good. So the difference is firstly, we don't have time for that. That's what I meant at the start. But this particular report has to be done within basically two days. Sure, you can. And then the this second, this was flipped. pardon me, you said this was flipped. In what way? This flipped as opposed to crunch. Uh, it's flipped, well, very slightly flipped in that they get uh, a little bit of a, a thing on Monday. Uh, okay. Um, but yeah, the, the, the real point is that, you know, in a way, just going to a lecture and, and labs and continuously, I don't really have much time to react because by the time I've had feedback from the labs, I have to go to the next lecture. Um, and, uh, and also, uh, it's been very passive. So they're just reacting to what I've told them as opposed to me. Um, so the main motivation was then to gain an understanding of what object oriented programming is, and that we, we, we do that uh, again. You know, they're not all expert programmers after this, but going back to what I said at the beginning, that's not necessarily the goal. Uh, the goal was to gain some fun, fundamental understanding of it. Um, it is a stressful environment, um, it is difficult. And as I said, students often say that it's one of the harder things to see program. But I think when we when we see them on Thursday evening and we, when we have that discussion about, okay, guys, you need to talk to each other. And we see that. Some groups, they just sat at a computer individually, not speaking to each other on the first day. And, uh, and our, our nudge always is, perhaps you want to go to a room and talk about this? When they start doing that on Friday, you can almost hear a sigh of collective relief as, as they, they start realizing that they can talk to each other and, and, and do things a little bit better. Um, a few other examples of the stuff we're doing in School of Mathematics. I, I talked about this because I think you just told me blogged about it, and he said, hey, what do you mention that? So I, I talked about this. A few of the other examples, we do a lot of other stuff on this particular MSc. Uh, for example, students uh, in groups write posters, and those posters are plastered all over the department with nice examples of applying a particular statistical technique to something they found interesting. <coughs> so, for example, we had a really good tennis player one year, and uh, there's a poster up on our wall that looks at um, the, uh, the importance of winning of the importance of the first serve in tennis in winning games. So, so stuff like that, going a bit to what you were saying, too, so it's stuff that interests them. You know? so, that's nice. um, we also have uh, the AA, the automotive uh, rescue people, come in and give them a challenge of deforming groups and stuff. So we do a fair bit of that. Um, the course I teach uh, involves students forming a company for 11 weeks and, and, and giving me uh, presentations at the very end. The collaboration comes from their self-centered uh, meetings self-centered, self-organized meetings uh, that they have to do. And um, there's a lot of stuff I've, I've heard and learned today that I'm, I'm going to take back to, to that. And I was really hoping Rob was going to still be here because in our first year, uh, we had a lot of small group tutorials that I'm, I'm sure he learned a lot from today, but he was hopefully uh, heading to, to those. In our small group tutorials, we have students sitting in groups and presenting to the rest of the class. Not quite IDL, but I think entered to the essence of how you do it. And uh, that's that. If you'd like to take a look at the slides, you're very welcome to. Thank you very much.